Now, we have shown in the previous lecture that trade based on comparative advantage can actually lead to increases in the world output. Indeed, the fundamental benefit of trade is that it enables individual trading countries to consume at a level outside their production possibilities curve, or PPC. Now, we can show this on a diagram. First, let us consider the case of a less developed country and a developed country. The LDC has a comparative advantage in wheat production, and the DC enjoys a comparative advantage in cloth production. The PPC for both countries is shown in, above in blue, as we assume under comparative advantage theory that there are no scale economies. The PPC is a straight line. Now, before trade, we assume that the LDC consumes consumes at point E, 200 kilograms of wheat and 400 meters of cloth. Now, we assume that the DC consumes at point K here, at point K. 1,600 meters of cloth and 400 kilograms of wheat. Now, without trade and assuming no improvement in either the quantity or quality of factor inputs and assuming constant technology, both countries can only consume along or within the blue line. They are bound by their PPC. But now both countries trade. As the LDC has a CA in wheat, it will only make wheat 1,000 kilograms, point A, and no cloth at all. Now, the DC will make 2,400 meters of cloth, but no wheat, which is point M on the diagram. Now, assuming one meter of cloth buys one kilogram of wheat, that is a one-to-one -one terms of trade, the trading con consumption possibility frontier, the red line, shifts out. Both countries can still only produce within the blue line PBC, but can consume beyond it with trade. With this particular terms of trade, the slope of the CPF, or consumption possibilities frontier, will be one. Now, let's say that the LDC decides to consume only 400 kilograms of wheat domestically. Now, there will be a surplus of 600 meters of wheat traded with the developed country. This buys 600 meters of cloth on the exchange. This is point X on the left-hand side diagram. Under autarky and pr producing and consuming 400 kilograms of wheat, only 300 meters of cloth could be consumed. A similar argument applies to the, to the developed country. Trade enables countries to consume at a level beyond their PPC and thus increase their world standard of living. The empirical evidence therefore shows that free trade leads to unambiguous welfare and income gains on the aggregate. The World Trade Organization estimates that the removal of all trade barriers would deliver over 6% of additional world income and unfathomable 1.8 trillion US dollars. However, there is an important caveat. Due to the diminishing marginal rate of substitution, returns are unlikely to be constant regardless of scale. As output increases, more and more ill-suited resources that yield low marginal products have to be employed. Thus, the PPC is likely to be bowed out rather than straight. Thus, unlike our example, countries rarely completely specialize. While Singapore may have a comparative advantage in, say, high-value added services, it doesn't make sense to devote all of its resources to only make services and force the aunties in the Western digital hard drive factories to take up positions as Shenton Way bankers or prudential insurance actuaries. Now, sometimes transport costs also may be so excessive that it negates any gains from trade, and trade does not happen. China may be able to produce a haircut cheaper than Singapore, but Singaporeans aren't likely to start flying to Shenzhen to dye their hair.